Hey everyone, welcome back. So we're gonna be jumping right into today's project. Now this project was really simple and easy, but it was completely unplanned for. So in this video, I'm gonna be building a very simple box style cat house. Now the main purpose of this is to be able to fit a cat bed inside of it and provide protection from the elements outside. Now the reason for this simplicity for the build is because this project was unplanned. I simply went out into my garage and spent about half an hour looking around at what supplies I had on hand and what I could build from my materials that I had available. So I decided to settle on some three quarter inch plywood that I had just some random pieces essentially and I just made it work for the dimensions I needed which were primarily based around the size of the cat bed. So the cat bed was about 16 inches at the widest and around 12 to 14 inches in depth. So I settled on a 12 by 16 inch box which the cat bed would stuff inside and this is for a fairly small cat so it should work just fine. Now I'm building this cat house because we have a stray cat in the neighborhood that likes to hang out and basically lives on our front porch. So our porch is so large, I think the main reason he hangs out there is that no matter how hard it's raining, there's always a dry spot where he can hang out and he's not gonna get wet. So he likes to spend most of his day sleeping there when he's not wandering around the neighborhood or hunting. During summer, we started to leave some water out for him because it was so hot, and then we slowly started putting some food out and he's been hanging out a bit more. But now that the temperature is starting to drop a bit, I was afraid that he was going to get really cold at night, so I kind of got suckered into building a cat house for him. Now that you know why I'm building the cat house, let's get back to how I built it. After I had all the pieces cut, I started assembly by attaching two pieces together using my corner clamp and then using brad nails to hold them together. Now I continued this process for all the other pieces until I had the entire frame assembled minus the front door. I did briefly consider using wood glue to assemble the box rather than brad nails, but the problem is, is that some of these pieces have already been painted from the previous project that they were used for, so wood glue doesn't work on a painted surface, you gotta have that unfinished wood for the create that good mechanical bond. So that wasn't gonna work, so I had to settle on using the brad nails. Also, as I assembled the box, I went ahead and caulked the inside edges. I wanted to make sure that moisture couldn't creep in and primarily like bugs, especially ants, wouldn't be able to crawl in through those edges. Now, of course, they could still get in through the front door because there's going to be that opening, but I just wanted to eliminate as many possible areas where small little insects could crawl in and bother the cat. Once the box was fully assembled minus the front, I went ahead and added some screws into the sides to make sure that the whole thing wouldn't be able to come apart. Now I doubt it would have come apart in any case because I put so many brad nails in it, but I like to over engineer things. With the box fully assembled, I was ready to tackle the front door. To dry out the template for the doorway that I'm cutting out, I measured in 4 inches from each side and then measured up from there 4 inches. This would make an 8 inch wide doorway. And then for the height, I took the center line at the top of the board and brought it down 3 inches and made a mark. Then I connected that center line to each side by just freehand drawing out an arch doorway. Now initially I wanted to make the door as small as possible, just big enough for him to be able to get in basically. That way it would trap as much of his body heat inside since the box would be fully enclosed and the only way his body heat could escape is through that small little opening. This would keep him as warm as possible during winter. However, I decided to make the opening bigger than I initially planned for two reasons. The primary reason was is I wanted him to be able to get in and out of the box very quickly. If he felt threatened by another animal or even by myself, I wanted him to be able to escape without getting somehow trapped in the box because the opening was too small for him to make a fast getaway. The second reason is that the bed that I'm going to put in here has a rather tall side edge to it, about 3 inches tall. So he already has to step over that to get in and out. So if I made the door smaller than what I'm currently making it, it would have become even more difficult for him to get in and out, which of course goes back to the first reason where I want him to be able to get out of the box very quickly if necessary. Now that the front door is cut and the box is assembled, I'm ready to primer and paint. So 
So as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, everything I used to build this cat house was essentially uh, scrap or anything left over here in the garage. And this paint is no different. This paint was actually left here by the previous owners and they left three and a half gallons of this particular color on hand. And I've got no other use for it. So I'm gonna start using on random projects that I wanna have painted, but you know, don't wanna spend the money to buy paint for. All right, now that the box is fully painted and I gave it a couple days to set, I'm going to line the entire inside of the box and the top of the box with carpet. Now all of these carpet pieces are scrap left over from when I installed the carpet in my gym and my game room. Unfortunately, none of the carpet scraps I had were big enough to fit edge to edge the way I wanted it to inside the box. So I had to cut them down to various sizes to be able to get that edge to edge fit that I wanted. Now this took a little bit more time, but I think it was worth the effort because I managed to cover the entire inside of the box with carpet. Now to attach them, I used hot glue on the back of the carpet and then stuck them down. And then after it set, which was really quick, you know, only like 30 seconds, you have to wait for hot glue to set. I then came back and stapled them down so that they wouldn't come up at any point. Once I lined the entire interior of the box with carpet, I attached the front door. Now I only use screws to attach the front door. The reason I did not use bride nails is that by using screws, I could remove them and the door would come off easily. That way I could get back inside the box if I need to fix something or remove anything or even just clean it out really good. And my last step was to attach some carpet tiles to the top of the box. Now I did this because, you know, cats love to sit on top of things and I figured when it's nice and sunny out, he'd be able to sit up on top of the box and just kind of lounge out and have something soft to lay on. Now if you're wondering why I lined the entire inside of the box with carpet, well the reason is, is that carpet is a really good insulator and I, of course I want to keep the cat as warm as possible during winter which is the reason why I built the box in the first place. Alright guys, the box is fully assembled and the last thing I need to do is just put this cat bed inside and take it out there and see if he likes it. Hopefully he uses it and I didn't just spend all this time working on something for nothing.